launching these rockets is a safety issue into the NAS. And I think it's, it's uh, a situation that, that requires the same level of safety management and safety culture that we're... That's what the director of the FAA, the Airspace Regulatory Agency, said. According to them, Boeing is the safety standard that SpaceX must meet. Yes, you heard me right. However, the performance of both companies on the ISS tells a different story. In fact, SpaceX's Dragon is intended to rescue two astronauts who were abandoned by Boeing's Starliner. Is this another FAA mistake? Let's discuss it in today's NR Studio episode. In a recent hearing, California Congressman Kevin Kiley asked FAA Administrator Mike Whitaker directly. The FAA Administrator has repeatedly cited safety concerns and said that is why they are punishing SpaceX's Falcon and the delayed spacecraft. Mike said, I believe that safety is the public interest, and that is our primary goal. This is the only way we can achieve safety compliance. Interestingly, during this session, Mike Whitaker highlighted some unclear elements that were violations by SpaceX. SpaceX then sent a letter to Kevin Kiley to highlight the FAA's flawed arguments. This shows that the FAA is not working effectively from its leadership position. But perhaps the most controversial thing about Mike Whitaker's statement is the opinion about Boeing that I shared at the beginning of the video. He said SpaceX has failed to ensure operational safety, including problems with Starship and some recent problems with Falcon 9. But that is simply not reasonable. With Starship, the rocket is still in development, so problems are inevitable. Problems are inevitable. If the FAA's argument is applied to the entire industry, companies may be very reluctant to develop missiles in the future. With Falcon 9, the issue did not affect public safety and did not affect the flight mission. Regarding the delay of Flight 5, the FAA said, I believe the two-month delay was necessary to meet the departure requirements, and I believe it is an important part of the safety culture. And the funny thing is that the FAA chose Boeing's culture as the safety standard. Boeing also needs to exist in the commercial space. Boeing was indeed a giant in the past, but entering this entry, the company is slowly declining. In the aviation field, Boeing has had major failures from time to time that have resulted in many fatalities. Another failure usually occurs. On the aerospace side, Starliner has certainly been the center of attention of the industry this year. After years of delays due to problems, the CFT-1 mission launched in June. However, during launch and docking with the ISS, the spacecraft showed many problems, such as helium leaks, thruster failures, and others. This delayed its return, caused chaos on the ISS, and eventually returned without astronauts. NASA and Boeing are currently trying to analyze the Starliner problems and have not provided any updates. The next scheduled flight, Starliner 1, has been pushed back until late next year, but this could be further delayed if the problem is not found and Boeing does not receive a launch certificate. This could make Boeing unable to fulfill NASA contracts. I wonder if this is the standard the FAA is talking about. Too bad. At least Boeing does not deserve to be in that position right now. And by comparison, SpaceX has clearly shown that they operate much more safely and efficiently than Boeing. With the Falcon rocket having had a few minor issues recently, SpaceX has been operating for almost a decade without a single problem. Among them, Falcon Heavy has maintained a 100% success rate since its launch. As for the ISS, Dragon also participated in NASA's Starliner refueling program. However, unlike Boeing's spacecraft, Dragon is currently carrying out many projects with nine flights for NASA, including test missions. In addition, they also carry out many other private missions. In the coming days, Crew-9 will depart to rescue two astronauts left behind by Starliner. At the time this video was made, Falcon 9 and Dragon on this mission had just completed their static firing test. The two astronauts, Nick Haig and Alexander Grabanov, moved to the launch platform, and then SpaceX completed a full test with two astronauts on Dragon. Most importantly, in terms of safety, we can see that Dragon is also an absolute success. Even with an unprecedented mission like the Polaris Dawn spacewalk, Dragon still performed brilliantly. It can be said that only by this comparison can we see that SpaceX is much safer than Boeing. That is why the FAA administrator's statement caused a strong reaction from Elon Musk. He continued the session with a message to Mike Whitaker. He should resign. Of course, the more the arguments multiply, the more we see the FAA trying to slow SPACEX down to benefit other companies. 
The Starship delays certainly benefited ULA and Blue Origin because those companies were delayed because of their own issues. And now Boeing, perhaps it is also being favored by the FAA. They didn't interfere when the spacecraft was flying and coming back with a lot of problems. But they may not realize that their regulations are also creating opportunities for other countries, especially China, to catch up or even surpass the United States. France recently, the first quarter launch statistics again showed SpaceX's dominance. They launched 429,125 tons, while China was second with only 29,426 tons, which means SpaceX launched 14 times more than their competitor behind them. Regarding Flight 5, SpaceX recently released images of the preparations, along with the following message. SpaceX engineers spent years preparing and months testing the booster capture attempt on Flight 5, with engineers spending tens of thousands of hours building infrastructure to maximize our chances of success. Of course, without SpaceX, we would be outpaced by China in many ways. It's fair to say that if we lose this advantage, or even the leading position, because of internal issues in that country. What do you think about the FAA administrator's statement? Should Mike and his agency be kicked out of the aerospace industry? Say yes in the comments if you agree. So be sure to like, share the video, and subscribe to our channel to continue following SpaceX's development journey. Despite the challenges, SpaceX continues to make impressive progress with its Falcon 9 rocket. On September 24th at midnight Eastern time, a Falcon 9 rocket lifted off from SLC-4E in California, marking the 64th year of Starlink missions. The booster for this mission, B-1081, successfully landed on the shore, I Still Love You, or O-C-I-S-L-Y, drone ship, completing its 10th mission. This landing was ASOS LY's 103rd and the 351st overall for a SpaceX booster. B-1081 has previously supported several high-profile missions, including two to the International Space Station, with Crew-7 and CRS-29, two climate monitoring satellites for NASA's PACE and ES's Earth Care, and the Transporter-10 rideshare mission. Most importantly, with this mission, SpaceX achieved a 90-second launch this year, officially surpassing the previous record set last year. Combining one Falcon Heavy mission and two Starship missions, SpaceX now has 95 missions completed by 2024. Looking ahead, SpaceX has more milestones to reach, with just three launches away from matching last year's total of 98, and they need two more than that to reach 100 launches per year. The Falcon 9 itself is eight missions away from reaching its 100th launch, with a target of 148 launches a year and more than three months to reach it. SpaceX is on track. Records are still being broken despite the setbacks. The launch schedule is getting tighter as the year draws to a close. So stay tuned for SpaceX's next move. In addition to SpaceX, Firefly Aerospace has also made significant progress this year, recently landing a major launch contract. NASA awarded Firefly, a Texas company, a contract on behalf of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, through its Vader Launch Services program. Vader Launch Services allows NASA to offer fixed-price contracts for satellite launches. As part of this contract, Firefly will launch Quick Sounder, NOAA's next-generation environmental satellite prototype, into low Earth orbit. While the award amount has not been disclosed, the Vader program offers a maximum value of $300 million for all contracts. During its five-year commissioning period, according to NOAA's website, Quick Sounder is part of the Near Earth Orbit Network, or NEON, a new generation of polar orbiting weather satellites. Its mission is to collect critical weather data for several organizations, including the National Weather Service. As noted on NOAA's website, the Quick Sounder mission supports NOAA's next generation architecture for its upcoming low earth orbit program, which provides critical data to the National Weather Service, the National Weather Industry, and other users around the world. NOAA is currently scheduled to launch before February, 2026. NOAA is working with NASA to accelerate the development of small and medium satellites to improve weather forecasting, disaster management, and climate monitoring. NASA will manage the development and launch of these satellites, while NOAA will provide funding, technical requirements, and manage post-launch operations.
This contract is a significant milestone for Firefly, providing an opportunity to build greater credibility in the aerospace industry. Historically, no AA has relied on highly reliable companies like SpaceX for its satellite launches, making this both an opportunity and a challenge for Firefly. It will be interesting to see how they handle this important responsibility. As folks head off for today's episode, thank you so much for watching and see you next time.